my colleagues uh, Ed Zuckel and Candy Daffer present, as well as Courtney Robinson and uh, President uh, Roger McLean for here tonight. Michael, if you want to read that. Uh, Bill 64. Uh, amends Article 121.05, uh, City Racing Vehicles, by changing the word sedan to vehicles in two places. All right, thank you, Mr. Hanlon. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Mr. Zuko, at this time, uh, regarding the vehicle policy and the number of vehicles. Uh, Mr. Zuko did some uh, extensive work on this as far as costs related to the vehicles and uh, take home. So I'll, I'll turn it over to him at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. All right, uh, as you stated, um, I did a cost analysis of this. Now, obviously, as it states in the cover letter, it is an estimated cost, because there are several other factors involved. Some of those include insurance on the vehicles, vehicle depreciation costs, liability issues from the city, Reduced warranty time for, uh, frames due to additional mileage on the vehicles, um, and general wear and tear. Um, as you'll see, basically on page uh, four, I believe it is, how these were figured in, how the costs were all figured, the gas price that the city pays, as well as uh, the cost for an oil change. And you'll also note that any additional repairs would not be included in the total cost per year for the vehicle because there's no way of telling what repairs are going to be needed until the car actually comes in for service. Currently, there are 30 vehicles that are taken home. The policy calls, or the city ordinance 12105 calls for 13 only. Uh, when that was written, um, there was a residency uh, requirement, so uh, the issue of canines was not considered at that time, it is now going to be added in an amendment later on down the road. So the amount of vehicles that will be taken home will go to 16. Now, there are also three vehicles, uh, three vehicles from CID, Criminal Investigations Division, that are not part of that 16. So in reality, there's 19. Um, there are currently 18 police vehicles going home, five, five fire, one of which is an EMS vehicle, three streets, one community and economics development director, two parks vehicle, and one communications vehicles. Uh, the proposal is to eliminate seven police vehicles, one fire, two parks, and one CEDC. Uh, the total current cost for the police vehicles is 9,892.15. Fire is 2,608.30. Streets is 1,327.83. Parks is 467.12. Um, the CED director is 349.81, and the communication supervisor is 210.11 for a total cost of $14,855.32. As I said, that does not include any additional costs that would obviously normally be included with running a vehicle. Um, and I'll give you the list of proposed vehicles that. Um, that we believe should be used for take-home vehicles. And you'll find that when I read them, they're mostly emergency vehicles. The chief of police, the two assistant chiefs of police, police captain on call, four canine vehicles, which are obviously mandatory, the fire chief, the two assistant chiefs, the EMS coordinator, the public works director, the streets department superintendent, the facilities manager, and the communications operation manager. Most of those, like I said, are emergency vehicles. Uh, for example, the EMS coordinator and the communications operations manager were included in, in the event of a disaster. They are responsible for, obviously, uh, first aid care and the, the communications part of that disaster. And as I said earlier, the CID vehicles are not part of the 13, so they're also automatically included. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Zuko. At this time, I'll take any uh, questions from uh, my colleagues on the committee. Questions or comments? Yes, I yes, have. Sir? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Hendricks. Um, I have concerns and questions about the, um, especially the police department uh, with the captains. 
Um, I have noted that many times the captains are not only on duty uh, through the day and on their shift, but uh, any meetings I go to, I'm, I always see a captain there. Uh, I feel that the um, captains of the police department, um, this is the one perk that they have, and I think it's a necessary perk. I think after uh, they work sometimes 40, 50, 60 hours a day, they may be going to a, a, a prime lunch, pardon me? A week, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> a day, they do a day, some of them. <laughs> They're, they're I'm good. sorry. They're they're good. Good. Now, my feeling is that I, I, I see them um, out there all the time. I see them at meetings, and they work many hours. and And I believe that their vehicle is very important to them. Um, it's been brought up about insurance. Mr. Robinson brought that up as far as if they're using their own. And hypothetically, if if, if one of the captains is at home and he's on a call, but there is an emergency of some sort. And his vehicle is in, in his public. His personal vehicle is in the garage, and uh, he needs to get. Maybe there's a riot in downtown. Something happened. Explosion. He he needs to get there, and he doesn't have a vehicle. Now I I, I don't think it's fair that um, these captains uh, who use the, I I can understand them. The point is, at one time they lived in the city. That makes a difference. I think what we should do is um, think about the administration and the police department. I think we should take like maybe 90 days, take about three months and really evaluate this and come up with a different plan where we could put so, so much mileage that they, when they take them home, different things like that. I think there's things that needs to be worked on on this. I, I don't think it's fair just to take the vehicles away from them. With, with the, and the same thing with public works. Um, and there's, there's um, other emergency superintendents or whatever that may need their vehicles at night. So I, I think we should uh, uh, take time and really um, work on this, take maybe 90 days and throw it back to the administration and, and the police department and see if we can figure something out. Okay, okay. thank you. To answer your, a couple of your questions, first of all, the, those captains, and you, you, can't, you can't argue with me all you want, but I work there so I know how the program works, okay? When they have those meetings, they change their schedules. And if they don't change their schedules, they get comp time. Okay. So second. I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I if said, they don't change their schedule, schedule, then they get comp time for attending those meetings. They get what? Comp time, computation, a time and a half. Overtime. Oh, the captains get overtime. Yes. They have to go to a, uh, um, up to 480 hours they can accrue. Wow. Okay. The second thing is the streets departments. They are getting their vehicles. I don't know where you got that from. I see. Uh, Assistant Chief uh, Strauss shaking her head over there. Uh, is there something about well, yeah, well, the courtesy of the floor then, I guess? Is that what you do? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Just hold that thought about the count. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe when Captain McClain lived in the city or was a captain, he got taken back and forth to work. Am I correct? At least when you're on the platoon. Oh, you're jogging my memory. Yeah, <laughs> When I was on the platoon, the shift commanders got picked up at their residence yes. and back and forth. And I know when I was there, it wasn't comp time. I don't know what happened after that. It wasn't comp time, but we had to compensate to compensate command staff for sometimes putting in long days, running back and forth. Okay. We get personal leave. Okay, all right, then it's maybe call personal leave. But I think also, I think 90 days is way too long. I mean, I mean, these numbers don't lie unless these people, the folks plan to move. Now, for instance, in the, the chief of police spot you'll see here, that's going to be obviously a lot higher because that was used with the prior chief. Obviously, there's been promotions, retirements, and some of those positions have been moved around. So that's been taken into, comp in, into this computation. Well, may I respond to that? I, 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 I do see this, and I, I, I believe there are certain departments like the street department, the fire department, um, the police department. I believe that these are departments that are, are required to be out there for emergencies, EMS, so on and so forth. I agree maybe with the parks department, uh, director of community economic, but when it comes to our public safety, the fire department, 
and the, the, the chiefs, the captains, and, uh, and our public works department, there are many times that they have to go out there and not just the director that has to be out there, superintendents or managers that might have to go out there on an emergency with the street. And I, 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 my feeling is that um, these departments really um, need these vehicles. And I agree with you. I agree with you, and that's why they're listed there. Yes, but there are a few that are taking, we only have one captain. Well, it says a captain on call, that's, that's all you need per week is one captain. They're only on call once a week. Oh, I should say a week at a time. Let me clarify that. All right, what happens? So what justifies another captain traveling, as an example, 70 miles back and forth to work? What can you, how can you justify that? Well, this is what I'm saying. I think we should take uh, several months to look at and come up with some kind of plan where it, a certain amount of mileage, you can only 15 miles away or whatever compensate for that. But I, 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 I do believe that every captain should have had the vehicle. Did, did you have the, did you have a vehicle when you were a captain? I did, yes. Did you find it necessary at times? At times I did, yes. I, even if you weren't on call, do you believe that there were times that you... you well, I lived in the city, though. That, there's a big difference. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I think we, we can, some way we can figure this out, that the captains keep their cars, and maybe the ones that live 30 miles away, uh, we could adjust that. As, as, and the same thing with, with the, uh, the uh, uh, public works and, and the fire department. I'm just, ask, uh, I'm just requesting that we hold this up for another... 90 days and, and, and look into it uh, a little more and have the administration um, later. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the, the committee? And now uh, I'll open up to other, my colleagues on the council. Anything? Uh, I, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple of things for me, which is, I mean, first and foremost, I'd like to get an idea of <laughs> You know, we have the, the breakdown here of miles driven per week. I'd like to have a, a sort of an idea of a rough breakdown between home to work and at work. So that's something I think we would need to to look at. I also think that, um, and look at this, you know, in response to what Ms. Atha just said, actually, I would argue that parks, at least the superintendent, is important. Just yesterday, we had an issue where, because of the severe weather, a tree went down in West Park and it was uh, affecting the pedestrian walkways in the park, which are obviously heavily trafficked, not just by people using the park, but by people walking through the neighborhood. That's used as a shortcut to the neighborhood. I know I live across the street. So there are gonna be emergency situations in that case where due to extreme weather, especially in the summer, you might have a situation where someone needs to come out. So there, there's that factor to it as well. Um, also, in response to the argument about only the on-call captain is needed, I can tell you, I go to as many crime watches every month as I possibly can. And I can tell you right now that it's not just the on-call captain that's showing up. And, and Councilman Hendricks knows this because he did it. The captains are going to their crime watch meetings every month. So it's not just a matter of, and they are going on their days off, and I understand that they might be getting a comp time, which comp time is not actually overtime, it's time you can use as, as off time, so it's not actually overtime, that they're getting. But, because I know, I, I had come time when I worked for the turnpike, it was a different thing. But, they're going to these meetings and they're showing up. They're also responding to any emergency situation in their PSA district. I can tell you, as someone who lives in an area that has a lot of issues with Allen High School, a lot, I like the fact that every day, Captain Vangelo was there, and now his replacement is showing up. I, that's a great thing. I like that they're there every day to deal with that. And I know that the fellow residents in my neighborhood feel the same way. You know, you have the same person who's responding to these, they know which kids are gonna be the issue, they know which ones are gonna start it. So there's aspects to that that I think is important. We have other issues where, you know, have problems in certain neighborhoods and the captain being able to show up every time, he knows, okay, this neighbor's gonna be that problem, this neighbor is not gonna be an issue, who's who I can talk to. The on-call captain might not know that if it's not their PSA district. So there's, there's arguments here. And I think that most importantly, I would agree with Councilwoman Affa because the administration should respond to this because even when you look at the original policy, it's very simple. In section C, assignment of city vehicles, section one, the mayor shall have authority to assign city personnel to the vehicles. 
I think that the mayor is, well, not think, the mayor very clearly is the one who has the authority to assign. I think that we made a proposal. I think that giving the administration time to respond to it and say, all right, maybe we should change it. When this policy was written, as you said, Councilman Zubel, it was a different time. Most of the captains lived in the city. I would argue to, to President McLean, when you were a platoon captain, I'm imagining that we didn't have 120,000 calls a year in the city. We all know those numbers climb every single year. So times change, policing changes. This was written a, quite a long time ago, especially in terms of how society changes and policing techniques change. So I would just say that I think we should send this to the administration, have them respond to it. I don't think that 90 days is out of the realm of possibility in terms of giving the administration the full time to do their due diligence to look into this, especially because Mayor O'Connell is new in his position. We want to give him as much time as possible. He might have a new managing director tonight who's going to want to weigh in on that. If he is approved tonight, he's not going to start until June. So there is the argument that we do need to give some time to look into this. So, and obviously I'm sure IT is going to have to be involved in pulling records, which they're a little busy right now. So I don't think 90 days is unreasonable. This policy has been in place for, what, 20 years now? And this hasn't been, in, this has not been an issue that needs an immediate fix for that time. So let's take the time to do it right. We saw this with the pawn shop law two weeks ago. If we move without doing our due diligence and doing our homework and making sure that everyone who has a stake in it is brought to the table, we're gonna have unintended consequences which we're gonna to need to come back and fix. I can tell you, I know the solicitor's office still has not weighed into my question that was brought up as to the liability, which Councilwoman Office said. So I would just recommend that the committee send this to the administration for the administration's response. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. And I, I'll just, uh, apparently didn't read down far enough in the ordinance because it clearly says that being on call, there's no exception to taking the vehicle home, right? And the, uh, did you didn't read down far enough. First of all, Councilman, yes I did. So please don't accuse me of not doing my job. I was talking to reference. Councilman Zubel, I just think that this needs more work done. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Any other comments from Council? If not, I'm gonna open it up to the public for any comments you may have. Good evening, Council Tom Hong, 2016 East Highland Street. For the first time in a long time, I agree with everything that Candia said except one word, the 90 days. I say, let's reverse it. Let's stop it tonight. Let's see what the emergencies come up. Let's do a real test for the next uh, 30 days to see what's going on. Let's not, if, if the, if the tree falls down and that guy, whoever he is, drove out there in that weather to do what? To tell everybody he had the trees down? When he found out with a cell phone that the tree was down and they called his department, whoever it was, he had the information here and could send out a saw to cut it up for the people who wanted to work in the storm. They wanted to walk in the storm because that tree was in the way. There are people that love to do that. So we, I can understand having that tree in their way when they want to walk through a storm is very important. I, I'm, I'm sure that you're agreeing with me with the look. Mr. Don, I live in the neighborhood. It's not just like Midway Manor where it's used as a park. This is also used as a thoroughfare through the neighborhood. So having that pathway cleared is actually quite important. And, and explain the procedure. Explain what happened when the tree fell down and, and, and the head of... Uh... I didn't say that, Mr. Hahn. I said that there are emergency situations. For all I know, the superintendent and the parks director didn't go out, and maybe that means that they don't need these vehicles. What I'm simply saying is, council taking unilateral action without having the administration respond to it is going to create unintended consequences, which we're going to have to come back and fix in the long run. So let's everyone, we now finally have an administration that we can communicate with. So let's do the communication. This is not the Pulaski administration. We don't need to just pass things without their support. This is a new administration. Let's work with them. That's what I'm saying, Mr. Hahn. Sending it back to the mayor is, is, is not the answer when council can make the decision for the mayor. <clears throat> For 10 years, we didn't have an issue with that. 
when, when the mayor told them, we had people on council that rubber stamped everything he said. So wh why not you, you take the position of getting it down? What's the difference in reversing engineering? It's done a lot of time. Get rid of it, see what the emergencies are, and then work from there. Okay, uh, you, you had five emergencies, uh, you need a car. Or let's change the ordinance that everybody that uh, has a job in the city live in the city. Maybe we should go to that ordinance instead of having them move, uh, move all the other places. There's more, there's more ways to, to do this than, than what you're saying or, or making for a, a lot of political excuses. Oh, I'm for you, I'm for that. This is not about a political decision. It's about the actual budget, the money that can be saved, either here, there, or, or everywhere. All right, thank you, Mr. Ellis. Good evening, Mr. Ellis. Uh, well, I've been sick or something a long time. I don't know if I can follow that one, but... Anyway, there's, there's more to this cost than what's on this sheet. And I agree there should be maybe some more work because if you go back to the Centera contract, you'll see that there's limits on how many miles these new cars can put on every year. And I don't know where we stand on all these cars. That would be an addition when they're going to have to be replaced. There might be five or six cars right now that have to be replaced or should be replaced unless you go into another agreement with Centera and say, look, we're going to exempt them and then you're going to go into this automatic repair, it's more cost. But if you look, if you go back a few years, I think they spent 600 and some thousand dollars replacing all these SUVs. I mean, there's more to this cost than just meets the eye. So down the road here in the next few months, when you go to budget, and when you should be thinking about this now, I think that's where the whole thing comes about. You've got to meet this budget. Who's going to pay for this? Now, is it unreasonable to have one captain, the guy that's on duty, and the rest come in and get a car or whatever they need. You have to work that out. You make that decision. That's your responsibility. But somebody has to pay for this stuff. And that's what you have to look at. So there's more things that come up. How are you gonna cut the expenses? How are you gonna cut them? If you look at the expenses that are coming up with the city, school board, city, LCA, you're gonna be chasing half these people out of town, the people that can pay. You gotta start thinking about this. Can you cut back here? I think you can. Are you strong enough to do it? I don't know. Maybe you're not. Thank you, Mr. Hunsaker. I would add that uh, Mr. Zuckel uh, had some extensive work, and one of the things he mentioned is it's much more difficult to calculate is how much uh, wear and tear there is on the vehicles and the mileage putting on them. That's not something easily calculable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Who heard from Fort Pine Grove Street in Pennsylvania? Yeah. I want to thank Mr. Zuckel for putting this report together. I don't think we ever saw a report. Oh, he did some vehicles? Thank you, Ed. And uh, Ms. Apple, who I trust is one of my issues in liability, that is a big issue. On cars going home, liability is just a big issue. And my concern is, is what you call non assigned vehicles, is there not? Uh, I'm sorry, non assigned vehicles? vehicles? People have to drive non assigned vehicles. Or do any of them go home? Uh, they shouldn't be if they're not included in the. Like an inspector or uh, so inspectors and stuff like that. Do they take the vehicles home? They're not assigned vehicles, but they drive them home. Right? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, we had they asked they that information. Home. None of them should be going home. Well, I said, public works are in charge of this. There's only three vehicles that are supposed to go home from, from public works. That's it. I'm asking inspections. Can you believe those are unassigned vehicles? I, I don't know about building inspections. I'm not well, sure. you're in charge of them. I am not in charge of building inspections. But don't they send reports to you about how many miles they put in? Who, who takes care of how many? They're supposed to report for the system. How many miles somebody uses a, use a vehicle? Who reviews that report? When a person has, has I can answer that. As part of the ordinance, there's supposed to be a, a mileage check form where they put start at A and B, what you did. Um, that probably isn't as necessary anymore because the people that have the cars, and when we were just getting this together, we uh, uh, the clerk, Mr. Hamlin, sent out an email to all department heads to respond with what vehicles were taken home. That's how we got to this 30. Mm -hmm. So. But my concern is not assigned you. Some people drive around the city and take them home at night because it's their job, and sometimes they're on standby and they take them home. Yeah. How many vehicles are like that? Well, unless the department has life, unless there should be zero. Well, the 
broken. Yeah, now you're going to be standing in case. Somebody has broken and has standby people take them home. But my water department used to take their vehicles home for weekends, uh, but we don't have a water department no more. But we they used to take her home car home for weekends they were because they were on standby. I'll, I'll check. Sure there's standby positions in the city budget. I'll check with Mr. Leitner. That's his uh, I mean, purview okay. over community and I found my belt, but I believe that he has responded already and said no cars are going home. Just his. Okay, and one, my final thing is, as I read Ed's report here, I'm, a, I'm a sorry, it comes on the Circle's report. It says 80% of these cars go out of the city. That, that seems like a lot. That means this is the average of also how many people live out, employees live out of the city. Maybe council should look into how we can start bringing some of these employees back into the city. We can keep them, in the, keep them in the city if they're not to move out of the city. I mean, this is astonishing. You look, 82 percent of these people move out of the city. You know what we do? We lose wage tax. We don't lose the cost of car water. We also lose their wage tax. How much of that you take? That difference, 110, 120 thousand. How much wage tax goes out of the city also? Possibly, it might be an incentive to bring them back in the city to cut their taxes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. The only other thing I would say there is. Also, I mentioned that there were 77. There's actually six now because, again, uh, retirements, whatever. There's actually six going out of the county. So they're not even out of the city, they're out of the county. None out of the state. Huh? None out of the state. None that I saw, no. Okay, anybody else from the public? Chief? Yes. Good evening, Chief Officer. Good evening. Tony Oslave, Chief of Police. I just want to correct the record. Um, captains do not receive comp time or personal time or personal leave time for extra hours worked in a day, week, month, or year. Doesn't happen, doesn't exist. Um, so the also the assertion that we can simply change our schedules at a drop of a hat is not also untrue. Uh, due to the numerous demands uh, placed on a PSA captain on a daily basis, uh, anything from community engagement programs to crime watch meetings to uh, special events, uh, it's nearly impossible. I was four years as a captain in a PSA on special events. Uh, I almost was unable to, I was un unable to do it on most, I mean, most occasions. Uh, typically, uh, an average work week was at least 50 hours, mostly 55 to 60. Um, so that's just not correct. And just one other thing for the record, uh, we do not do this for compensation. We do not do it for the money. Uh, we simply want to make sure that we can respond to the community's needs in a timely and efficient manner. And if we're required to come into the city hall and to pick up a car before we can go to a community meeting or a major crime scene or an officer-involved incident, uh, it's going to hinder that effort. And I urge you to reconsider that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any other comments from the public? If not, I will. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm a little slow today. It's <laughs> okay. Uh, Blue Shoe, 625 North 6th Street. I once served as a manager on duty for a call center down in Carlisle, uh, Pennsylvania, simply because I was the only person with a four wheel drive vehicle at the time. So I understand the need for a captain or supervisor to have uh, a need of a vehicle for an emergency basis. But consider the, uh, the report, I haven't seen your report, but it does sound very detailed. But I caution, uh, the more you overthink the plumbing, the easier it may be to clog it up. Uh, the idea here is to make sure that the right people have the vehicle at the right time when they need it the most. Uh, just please keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any other comments from the public? Seeing none, uh, what I will propose and uh, that we do give the administration an opportunity to review this and uh, over the next uh, 90 days and at that point in time report back and uh, we'll then review this again. Again, I want to commend uh, my colleague, Mr. Zuko, because he did do very extensive work on this and, uh, and it took a lot of time and effort on his part. And I think it is time that we need to review these things and we need to make, perhaps make some changes, obviously to the ordinance in itself. Uh, remember we started this when it said uh, sedans which we don't have sedans <laughs> anymore. So uh, if, if my colleagues are agreeable on the committee, then I say at this point in time, we'll, we'll do that. We'll forward it to the administration and we'll come look at it. Okay, all right. we're all in agreement? Yeah. All right.
And that will conclude uh, this meeting of uh, public